In this video, I'd like to go through making uh, circular patterns uh, with, um, you know, this is a circular hexagon pattern, and I'm not going to go through the method on how I made this, but you can download this from my GrabCAD in the description and uh, see how I made it. Uh, you also, I want to focus on something like this, a little more complicated, where the uh, hexagon pattern sort of fades into the body of this thing. Uh, so why don't we go through the process on making this as a circular pattern. I uh, notice my keyboard monitor down here so you can see what hotkeys I use. I'm going to open up to the sketcher and let's create a sketch on the XY plane. And I'm going to start off by making a construction arc. This will be a center point arc. And then I'm going to make two driving lines, almost like a Pac-Man kind of figure. You can use polyline there as well. And let's make these coincident or merged, uh, depending on what lingo you like to use. Horizontal here, uh, I'm going to do an angle. There we go. An angle at 12 degrees. My rationale behind that is 12 is sort of a 30th of a rotation. So this is setting the stage for 30 features by doing 12 degrees. Uh, Shift R for radius, we're going to go 3 inch radius. We're fully defined, right? So we're going to close that. Next, uh, I am going to highlight all of these guys. You have to hold control for this. And we want to say offset on the uh, ZX plane. And there we have it. So we're going to add in a little vertical point here. And you really don't need a, a distance on that as long as you have the vertical constraint. That's what we're going to be using that for, right? So that gives us uh, one point to import. And now I can sketch. Actually, I'll highlight. I'll highlight here here and here. You may need to rotate your screen a few times just to make sure you see those points. We're going to create a sketch on a three points plane and now with those with this line imported here, here, and here uh, we are well off. Actually I'm going to edge import this entire line here and make them equal. All right, um, from here, I'm going to make two hexagons, horizontal. We're going to add in a coincident relation with that endpoint there. Horizontal up here, coincident with this line. We're going to add an equal relation. And now they can sort of change size together. Uh, I'm going to add in a construction line to go from point to point and we're going to constrain this to be perpendicular. Uh, we may need it perpendicular to both. I'll choose this dimension over here. I'm going to say we want this to be something like 50 thou 0.05 and uh, we have one degree of freedom so we'll take this guy and just make him level with uh, around the origin of the part, not the origin of the sketch, which is over here. Uh, we're fully defined. And so now we're ready to do an extrude. And we're kind of flexible on uh, what distance that we want to extrude. So we'll close. All right, there's our nice sketch uh, from the part workbench. We'll do an extrude, 0.75 perhaps, and then from here we can reverse the direction. And you may need to rebuild the part depending on how your part is rebuilding. Uh, so now we're ready to pattern this. 
and I kind of messed up on my first go around so I'm going to be a little bit more careful as to how I patterned it. I can always reference um, some of the dimensions from here, right? I'm going to make actually something horizontal. This is just to make sure I got it right because I don't want you to follow along and then be mad if I get the pattern wrong like I did on the practice part that I showed you, or showed you earlier. Very minor mistake, but we're going to go perpendicular. Actually, I can probably get away with choosing equal vertical and I'm just building kind of a structure to save me from doing some math I have figured out this mathematically in the past but this channel is not a math channel anymore you can see the first video I've ever uploaded was a math video and it didn't go well <laughs> so what I did is I made these lines equal and so this sort of represents you know the next spacing for the pattern so when I go to space my array out, I can get a good idea of how to space it. So we can change this over here to reference. I can add in a vertical reference dimension and I can go from the bottom of here to the same point on the next part and say it's 0.33894. And I've over constrained something, so let's get rid of this dimension. Apparently we're fully constrained, so <laughs> we'll close that. Um, we'll come down here to uh, draft. I want to continue to pattern this with this array tool, so I'm going to stand on my extrude, hit the array tool, and you can see it already gives us an array, but not in the way that we want. So we'll adjust this. I believe that uh, we want 0.33894. Go back, rewind the video, tell me if that's the right value, because I can't remember, I think that's the value that we just confirmed with that reference dimension. Um, Alright, so we go to Array, and under Data, oh, except, uh, yeah, that's right, so our numbers in the Z direction, we want X to be 1, Y to be 1, Z to be 10, right? And uh, that, that looks right, so if it's not the right number, it's at least really close. So don't get mad at me if it's slightly off, but I don't think anybody would be able to tell anyways. Uh, this is going in the wrong direction, so we're going to put a negative sign in front of that 10. Oh. So I think uh, actually our interval Z is going to have the negative. There we go, and now we're going in the right direction. Uh, we want to trim this because since we're going in a circular pattern these walls are going to run into each other if they get too deep so um, just as a matter of detail and you can skip this skip if you, if you want to too but I'm going to create a new uh, on the sketcher workbench create a new sketch on the XY plane that will be quite similar but I can't use the sketch that I've already made because it's too short or too small there's a few ways around it. I'm simply going to make a new sketch. Alright, so we're going to come here, come here. We're going to go parallel, parallel, equal. I think I'll actually use a rim point arc. Take the center of our rim point and put it on the origin. And we're going to add in a radius dimension. Let's go with something large, like 5 inches. Uh, that came in because I had this as a reference. So change that. There we go. 5 inches. Fully constrained. Uh, this is the part workbench, so we're going to use the CSG modeling method. Let's go back to our view here. Perfect. And 
And in our part, we've got our sketch highlighted. We're going to choose Extrude. And we're going to do something like 7.5 inches. OK. And under this, uh, we can also reverse. Oh, that's a lot longer than we need, but that's still fine. I'm going to choose this array and then this extrude in that order and make a cut. All right, so now I've uh, cut the edges of these hexagons that they will not uh, collide with other hexagons in a circular pattern. I can hide this sketch and hide this sketch using the spacebar. Uh, why don't we now uh, do a circular pattern? For that, we have to go back to the draft workbench. All right, in the draft workbench, we're going to stand on cut and choose this array over here. You can see we've added another array. We can adjust this. We don't want an orthographic, but we want a polar array. And notice that changes the other patterns that we've had. Uh, our axis is set to Z because the 1 is in the Z's place, and that's correct. Uh, so we want to change. This should be our number polar, yep. Yeah? So we're going to change this to 30 because we went 12 degrees, and 12 is a 30th of a rotation. So we're going to choose 30 and rebuild. And there is our array. Well, now we need to uh, trim this. So what I will do is create another sketch on the sketcher. I'll choose the XZ plane now. And I'll make my view nice and transparent with the wireframe. And I'm going to make some arcs. In fact, I, I'm going to get rid of these and change this up a little bit. I think I would be a little bit wise to go a little bit above and a little bit below my bodies, as that will help me smoothly do Boolean operations without error. I'm going to add in uh, horizontal constraints between the tops and bottoms of these arcs. Uh, we can also merge these arc centers so that they'll be concentric with one another. I'll add in a vertical dimension. Um, let's go 50, I guess I'm in thou, so we'll go 50 thou above. And I can edge import sort of the bottom most corner of my part. And uh, I can do the same dimension based off of those. There we go. 50,000 inches. Oh, now I know from my sketches that I have set the outer diameter to 3 inches. So I'm going to draw a vertical line. We're going to make this point coincident, and then this line and this line tangent. Horizontal. We're going to go 3 inches. We'll add in a vertical constraint. And both of these are now going to uh, be vertical because they're concentric. And finally, we have to say what, what is the ID that we want to uh, maintain. I mean, this can be really any dimension that we want. Uh, so I'm going to go with uh, 0.25. And we have one degree of freedom. So what radius do we care about in this? I would say we can do kind of a more exaggerated bend. So we'll do a radius of maybe 5 point, uh, let's go down to 5. That's, that's pretty cool. And uh, the end point does not go to the inside, so we're OK there. Let's close this profile. 
by adding a line from here to there. Make sure that these lines actually merge or you know combine with these points. Let's close and uh, if, if those lines didn't get on that face we'll get an error that says uh, cannot validate broken face you know the lines didn't actually latch onto the points like they would have appeared to. Let's go with part we'll do a revolve uh, with our latest sketch and it's just that easy, right? Now that's uh, that's kind of close. I think for safety, because uh, I've lost some tangent lines in there, I might have a persistent surface. I actually should edit this sketch to be a little bit more conservative. Um, I'm seeing something that could go wrong. So here, instead of going to the absolute outer diameter, we're going to say 2.975, right? We're going to stay inside of that X pattern, just make sure that we have, and that looks much better. Uh, perfect. So let's do a subtract, right? I'm going to select first uh, the thing I want to keep, which is my revolve. Next, the thing I want to subtract from, or the tool that I want to subtract, and that's my array and we're going to subtract this part. All right, well, uh, we made that. It turned out pretty well, but one of the beauties of uh, parametric modeling is that you can make some changes, and I think I'm going to do that. So let's go with yep, changing our revolve. I'm going to edit the sketch. Instead of 5 inches, we'll go with 5.75. And that's going to take a lot of rebuild time, so um, you know, expect to sit there for a while. But let's close that. And uh, yeah, I think I, I like that profile. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and make another feature. I'm going to actually hide my whole body and simply show my revolve feature and use that as a reference for another sketch. We'll head on over to the sketcher workbench and sketch on the same plane. I believe that is the uh, XZ plane. There we go. And we can sketch the rest of this body. And we want to have a nice pattern that the, the hex pattern just kind of fades into the main body, right? So I'm going to make just one arc and sort of visually offset this. Uh, actually, I'm going to make several arcs. I'm going to import the height here and here. Choose these two lines. Shift V for vertical and uh, say, oh, you know what, let's go. In fact, I'm going to do this a little differently. Let's make these horizontal with the H key. Horizontal, horizontal. Shift H, we're going to say 5,000. Right? Um, 5,000 and 5,000 up here. That way we won't have any terrible complications uh, when we go to do a boolean operation. If you're surface on surface that can be pretty tricky especially when they're all trying to be tangent and stuff. Um, so how deep of a hexagon pattern do we want to be? That's a little bit subjective. I like right about there. 9.15 seems like a good radius. Okay, we will grab this guy, add in a tangent, add in a vertical. I'm going to go up half an inch, and then maybe we can make this equal. 
and we're fully constrained. Next. We're going to add in a tangent, an equal, and add in 0.5 inches, and there we go. Uh, the next thing, how thick do we want this to be? It's up to you. This might be like a good waste basket or something. And I think this time I'm going to give it a base. The other time I made it completely hollow. We'll try to make this coincident here. There we go. Add in a horizontal dimension. Let's go with 0.5. And we'll add an equal here. That gives us three degrees of freedom. Equal down there. That's, oh, okay. Tangent. We need a tangent here and here. There we go. Nope. Well, you need to be tangent, buddy. There we go. So we've applied tangent, two degrees of freedom. One up here, I don't know why I've lost these tangents. I swear I've added them. Okay, that takes us down to one degree of freedom. Let's hope it stays that way. We're going to get these points going and merge these so that they'll be cocentric. And again with the tangent. I don't know what's going on. I guess I need a different method, so we'll just merge these uh, circle centers. And that'll be... That'll be what we're doing now. I'm s what I need to do is actually make this negative 5 thou, so that we come in and intersect in that mesh pattern, which is this inactive sketch sort of nicely fades in. It'd be perfect if they came in to be tangent, but dreams can't always come true. Um, negative 5 thou. Right, perfect. So we're going to close this. With this highlighted, we'll go to the part workbench and we'll do a revolve. With this sketch, easy as that. Now, I can show uh, my body once again. And we have this nice pattern that sort of easily fades in, as we can see. The last thing that we want to do is, uh, and I'm going to save this because this might take a bunch of rebuild time, so if I lose anything, then <laughs> it won't be totally lost. So we'll save here. And highlight my revolve, highlight my cut. And we'll run a fusion. All right, so that is our part. And I hope you enjoyed this video and it was successful for you. And uh, if it was, please subscribe. Best way to help me back. I'll see you in the next one.